All right. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is an exciting day. There's a lot of great content here. I know I'm going to stick around for some of it as well. But I want to thank uh, Natalia and the co-hosts for inviting me to talk to you all about GitHub Copilot. So we're going to talk about GitHub Copilot and some of the magical things that it can do. Uh, if I haven't met you before, my name is Burke, and I work with the Visual Studio Code team here at Microsoft. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe I've seen you on a short or a TikTok before sharing VS Code tips or tricks or um, trying not to be cringy. I apologize in advance if I was, uh, but this is my chance to shamelessly plug our YouTube channel uh, and say like and subscribe uh, and turn on those notifications. We post a lot of content there, especially if you want to keep up to date what's happening with GitHub Copilot, which is a really fast moving space, really fast moving at the moment, as is all things AI. Check us out on, uh, on YouTube and we will keep you up to date. Don't worry about it. Okay, enough of that. Uh, so Copilot, okay. It's really hard to go a single day anymore without hearing the word copilot, right? I work in Microsoft and I'm not even entirely sure what all the copilots are, right? It just looks like, what do we have here? There's one for Windows 11. Looks like maybe Edge has one. Uh, there's one in Excel. There's a, there's one in Bing. All right, so there's <laughs> there's a lot of copilots. But all of these copilots, though, they share something in common, and that is that the name comes from the original Copilot, which is GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot is the most widely adopted AI developer tool in history, and it is absolutely transforming developer experience. It is AI is certainly, no doubt about it, the next frontier in what we call DevX or developer experience, which is making you more productive and happier as a developer. Uh, yeah, and so we're right in the middle of this transformation, right? So it's a really exciting time to be in the industry, exciting time to be here, right? You're you're in the middle of it, which is awesome. It's a great time to be in technology, great time to be a developer. All right, so this is true. Uh, over one and a half million developers have adopted and are using Copilot, right? Um, and here's some of the numbers that I put up from some of the surveys that have been done, some of the tests to see 55% of developers uh, use that use AI coding are using GitHub Copilot. 55% uh, uh, in it say enables faster coding, right? So there's a lot of data that's pouring in, and it's pretty resounding uh, in terms of yes, it it does make you faster and more productive. And it's one of those things where um, once you have it you really, it's its hard not, it, it would be hard to code without it, right? It's almost become like your favorite editor in IntelliSense, it's something you can't live without. Uh, it is that good. All right, so let's take a look at it here. Before we do though, just to, to cover, let's see here, I lost my, oh, I got the, I've got the beach ball on my Mac. We're just gonna have to hold on here. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at how it works, went too far where you can find it really quick, and then what we call magic moments. And these are places where GitHub Copilot kind of shows up and blows your mind. And you're like, wow, that's crazy. I had no idea that GitHub Copilot could do that. First, before we do that, I need to make some disclaimers. GitHub Copilot is not a compiler. It does not know if the code that it's suggesting works. It doesn't know how to code, right? People have said before that these AIs, all they are is really powerful autocompletes, and that is true, although we could say the same thing about the human brain. But you just have to understand it isn't thinking, per se, right? It is just anticipating the next word. So it will give you wrong answers. A lot of times we say Copilot may give wrong answers. Copilot will give you wrong answers, 100% guaranteed. And you're going to see that today as I try to demo this live for you. Things will go sideways. Um, it was trained on open source. And what that means is that, <clears throat> excuse me, it's gonna be most capable on languages that are widely used in open source, right? So if you're doing JavaScript, awesome. You're in a perfect spot. Python, awesome. COBOL, eh, right? Your mileage may vary on these more obscure, older, what we might call legacy languages or ones that aren't so open source. And then lastly, GitHub Copilot is not your replacement and actually, Copilot is really only as good as the person who is using it. Um, if you don't know a lot about what you're doing, you'll find this out. The less you know about what you're doing, the more you have the opportunity to go off the rails with Copilot and 
take a bad answer and spend your day debugging instead of writing code. Uh, and so you are still the pilot. Uh, someone once said that AI isn't going to take your job, but a developer who knows AI might. I don't know if that's true or not, but I think it's a good way to think about it in the sense that it's just another tool for you as a developer to use to make yourself a better developer. Okay. Appropriate disclaimers in place. We're going to spend the rest of the time in code today actually looking at GitHub Copilot. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. Here we are. Hopefully, everybody recognizes this. Um, all right. So GitHub Copilot. You can see it here. It's in the sidebar here, but let's start kind of at the beginning here. So I'm going to jump into a TypeScript file and Copilot just just very basically, the most basic thing to do to use GitHub Copilot is to just code. So if we wanted a function that um, finds all occurrences of a number in an array, um, and then you can see we get another comment and returns the number of occurrences. Okay, that's fine. And then it's going to go ahead and write that function for us. Uh, and you can see here that we're actually getting types. Um, and that's likely because Copilot sees that we're in a TypeScript file, and it's like, ah, all right, I'll give you some types here, which is which is nice. Uh, now, does this work? I'm not, I don't know, right? I need to test this and make sure. But this is one way to use Copilot, and we call this ghost text, right? So this is the auto completion that you can see here. Now, you can press tab to take the whole thing, or you can press the command or control and right arrow, and you can take just pieces of it like this. Okay, and then you could stop and start writing code yourself. So that's one way to do this. Another way to do this would be to just write a very descriptive function, right? So you could have a function that say called function um, remove, uh, wait, find what we, we're going to do, find all occurrences, <laughs> occurrences of a uh, number. Let's see what, what does Copilot do? All right, I mean, that's the same result we had before. What's, what's wrong? TypeScript doesn't like this. Uh, for some reason. Uh, but those are the two ways to use uh, ghost text there. Now, if we go back, let's go back here. What do we have here to our initial comment? Um, so one of the things that you like, it, when we come down here with ghost text, if, if you get another comment with Copilot, you can actually just like give it a little nudge and it will automatically add what you what you need here. Now, in this case, we didn't get types. So you can see that. So uh, maybe we want to back up, try this again. There we go, right? And actually, we got a different answer this time. So what we want to do is actually actually test this out. So one of the things that's really nice about ghost text with Copilot is that it Copilot will anticipate what you're going to do next if you understand that it knows what you know based on what you've done so far. So we have a function that we've written that finds should find all occurrences of a specific number in an array. So what we want to do now is test that. So we're going to create a variable called nums, and then we're going to let Copilot generate some numbers here. Now, these are all you know individual numbers. So maybe we want to find uh, a larger array that has the number occurring multiple times, right? So what we can do instead here is say an array with a random number of numbers from 1 to 10, uh, not with, with, let's say, with 100. There we go. All right, so we have an array. And now what we want to do is we actually want to call this function. You'll notice, though, that if I just kind of like enter down, it should. So OK, so now it's going to try to find most occurring. You can see here it's going to write the function here. But what we actually want to do is we want to log out. Yeah. And then what we want is this find occurrences. And then we want to pass in the array. Oh, and then one. OK, so we're going to look for the number one and how many times that occurs in the array. So you can see that Copilot can kind of anticipate what you're going to do next based on comments or other code that's in the file and then write that code for you. So that's one of the things that Copilot does that's really nice. Now, that's ghost text. That's the simplest way to use GitHub Copilot, right? So if you don't know anything else about Copilot, just code and let the AI work with you. The other way that you can use GitHub Copilot is to use something called inline chat. So let's back out of here for a minute. And let's do um, 
here you can see it says press command or control I to ask GitHub Copilot chat to do something. So let's do that. So if I press command I, we get this inline chat box here. And let's ask for a simple express server. And so what we're doing here is we're asking, we're, we're chatting with the AI and getting a chat response right in line. Now we did get a simple express server, but notice that we didn't get types here, right? Even though we're in a TypeScript file. Uh, and so you would think, well, GitHub Copilot should be able to do that. It knows it's a TypeScript file. Well, this is valid TypeScript, right? So let's just be a little bit more specific. So let's come out, say a simple, simple express server, and then we'll just say with types, okay? Just being more specific, and we're staying as simple as possible with our commands. And now we get types here. All right, there we go. So we'll go ahead and save this. This is our express server. Now, in our project here, let's say that we want to um, uh, return here on our root route, we're going to return our index.html page. So what we need to do to do that is we need to get the app to use express static. And then you can see, although that it's kind of filling in for me. And here, it may anticipate that I want to um, return the index, or it may not. But if I start, you know, if I go to send file, it probably will, right? This actually isn't right, I think. I think we would need like this, right? There we go. Uh, and so you can see that I'm sort of combining ghost text and inline chat here to, to get the results that I want to work with Copilot. Okay, so we have this express server. Let's add like a route over here. So I'm gonna have, I got a controller. So the way I'm gonna structure this is put my routes in the controllers here. Um, I probably should have called it routes. It's called controller. So let's do a new file here. Let's call this weather data, weather controller. TS. And then let's go ahead and import, uh, let, sorry, let's see, import express. And then, yeah, there we go. So it knows, and it may know, uh, it does not know. So we need a router. There we go. All right. So I'm sort of combining ghost text and inline chat as I go. And it, it will probably anticipate now that we want a route. Uh, yeah. There we go. Right. So it's sort of writing, and, and if we continue to go down, it will likely anticipate. So, so at this point, right, like it doesn't know, it exports. So it's exporting the router. We do want to do that. But down here, like it does this from time to time where it puts these three back ticks. And this is where you kind of know, like, I don't know why it does this, uh, but it does. And it's kind of done <laughs> at this point, right? It doesn't know what else to do. Here, though, it might give us, right? So it's, it's saying, well, maybe you want to get the weather. Maybe we want to update. Right, so let's just like let's just do this. And eh, kind of not what we wanted, but you get the idea. Uh, all right, so that would be our weather controller. That's inline chat and ghost text. The other way that you can use Copilot is to chat with it directly right here. Um, and really, the trick with Copilot is using the right tool for the job. So in this case, we have inline chat. We have ghost text. These are really good for when you're writing code. Uh, chat is really good for when you're like bouncing ideas off of the AI. So for instance, we might want to ask the AI in this case, let's see here. And by the way, if you want to be able to see your files and the chat at the same time, you can open the secondary sidebar and drag the chat over there. Little, little tip there. Now we can kind of see it all. You can actually put the chat here in the editor space too if you want. I think, I thought you could. Oh, you know what you have to do? I think you have to say open chat in editor. Yeah, so you can you can put it wherever you like, wherever you need the most space. Okay, so we've got the chat open. What do we want to do? So let's say we want to integrate Swagger. So we want to integrate Swagger into our project here. So we're going to ask it. So it knows that it's an Express application. Now, how does it know this? Does it know about my whole project? It actually doesn't. Uh, Copilot is based on these large language models and they have the context limit. You can only send a certain number of, of tokens, we call them, right? And so it can't send your whole project. In this case, it probably could send this whole project, but in a normal project, it would just be way too large for the model. And so what it does instead is it looks at the code in what we call the viewable editor space and it includes that, you can see right here, with the request. And so based on this, it's like, well, 
this fellow is using Express. He probably wants to do it this way, right? And this is exactly what, what I would want to do to use Swagger. But see, there's a lot of code here. So maybe I look at this. Maybe I like it. Maybe I don't. This is a good place to brainstorm. Not a great place to write code, though, right? So you want to write code in the editor with ghost text and inline chat. And you want to use the sidebar chat for your brainstorming and other things like, I don't know, um, database connection singleton. The other thing you'll notice is that when I talk to Copilot, I don't talk to it like I'm talking to a human being, right? So you, you may feel like you need to say, how do I create a database connection file that's a singleton? But you don't need to do that. You wouldn't Google that way, so you don't need to talk to the, I that, the AI that way. It's not a person, OK? It doesn't need you to use correct grammar. It doesn't even need you to spell correctly. And in fact, Copilot is amazingly good at typos. It will just disregard your typo and can understand you really, really well. So there's no need to go back and correct yourself. Because you can see here, even though all I did was type this, it still gets this right. Creating a singleton for database connection, right? It's going to give me one for MongoDB. Nice. And it knows that I'm using Express, and it's even going to tell me how to pull it in here. So this is really nice. All right. So we've got, what have we done? Ghost text, inline chat, sidebar chat. That is kind of the gist of it, but that's not the only place that you'll find Copilot. So let's take a look at some of the other ways that you can use it. So in this case, we have this weather data file here. And let's say what we want to create an interface that matches the shape of this JSON file. Uh, it's not a complicated file. We could do that, but so can Copilot. Uh, we just need to point Copilot at that file. So one way would be to just open the file here, but we could also do this right here. We use this, this right here. This is this is called a variable in GitHub Copilot, and variables allow you to specify a value. So we're going to point it at a specific file. We'll choose weatherdata.json, and then we'll let it create that interface for us. All right. So there we go, and now we have an interface for our weather weather data, so that we can you know start using it as a type here. So those are variables. There's several variables. There's a file. There's code base, which actually looks at your, uh, your code base. There is editor, which is the viewable editor space. There's even selection, right? So if you select something like this, that automatically gets pulled in, but you can specify it as well like this, and that will pull in the selection, including what's you know terminal selection and things like that. All right. So now that we've talked about how to use Copilot, let's take a look at some of the places where it really shines. So let's go to our handy demos over here. So let's, where should we start? So let's start here with CSS. So I'm going to open up this HTML file here. And you can see that I'm building out this like chat interface. It's very rudimentary. But one of the things that Copilot is really, really good at is uh, things like CSS or the details that you've you've probably forgotten or you just can't know everything about, right? Like you can't know every CSS property um, in, unless you're Chris Coyer of CSS Tricks. It's just impossible, right? Uh, but but Copilot's really, really good at this stuff. So let's take a look. Let's go to new message. So new message, let's fix this box down here. Let's start here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just start talking to Copilot and asking for things, right? And I like to do this with comments when I'm in CSS. I'm going to use the command or control and slash. And let's just say, um, don't allow resize, right? We don't want to allow a resizing. And I, I think, yeah, see, it doesn't, it doesn't care if you spell things right or not. So we can't resize the box anymore. So that's gone. So let's give it a, uh, a what is it going to do? A thin light gray border. I like that. What else is it going to give us? A border radius. That looks good. See, it's kind of styling this here without me doing anything at all. Font size, no, but what I do want to do is center this thing, which I don't understand why it isn't centered, because the margin is set to auto. OK, so it should be centered, but it isn't. So I'm just going to say center the element. See what it does. OK, so this is really interesting. The reason why it's not centered is because it, a text area is an inline element by default, not a block level element. I forgot. Uh, and so Copilot knows, right? Which is quite interesting. It's looking and sees the margin, and it's like, oh, you need to display block. This is the kind of thing that, for me, 
can eat up 15, 20, 30, an hour. Embarrassingly enough, I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> like this is where Copilot really shines is fixing these silly mistakes and CSS is great. It's so good in CSS, I can't stress this enough. All right, so that's CSS. Let's take a look at some other stuff Copilot can do. Let's do, um, so let's look at this. Um, this project is a, it's, it's Wordle implemented in JavaScript here. And you can see it's quite verbose, more code than you would think Wordle would take. But one of the things that we struggle with as developers that I know I do, right? There's that old joke, the two hardest things in computer science are cache and validation, naming things, and off by one errors. And naming things is still tough for me. And you can see I've got these things named here, check. Uh, this is the main loop. It's just called play. And so one of the things that we've tried to do with Copilot is make it solve some of these problems that developers face every day, like naming things. So how does this work? So I've called this function play, but I could have called it anything, right? Let's call it foo, right? And, and I'm gonna just highlight this and I'm gonna go to rename, which is function F2. And then you can see here that what we do for you is we just sort of suggest, okay, based on what the function is doing and based on the other functions, the code and the file, um, these are the, this is what it's suggesting for me. It's actually suggesting Wordle, which is quite interesting. Um, but again, not that it's going to suggest the right name that you're looking for, but that it's going to jog your brain, right? So that you're like, oh, yeah, OK, so play Wordle, maybe not play Wordle, play, I think we call this Nodal. There we go. It's the name of the name of the app there. So that's renaming things. That's one of the places that you'll find it. Um, and so just kind of look for Copilot. If you have Copilot, just look for it as you're going along because it pops up in interesting places. All right, what else can Copilot do? Um, one of the things that it's really, really good at is doing regex. And this is, or regex. What's the right pronunciation, chat? Is it regex or regex? I say regex. Either way, I don't know how to write it. So the, the thing is, Copilot really does know how to write it. And regex is one of these things I typically steer clear of because it's so tedious. Uh, but with Copilot, you can really flex some regex. So for instance here, let's say we want to have a function that, uh, let's see, function to remove all HTML cars from a string. Let's see what we get here. All right. So does this work? I mean, it, it looks legit. Um, but one of the things that we can do is combine Copilot with our editor features uh, for, for maximum productivity here. So you'll see I had this test regex. This actually comes from a uh, regex, let's see, regex previewer. Yeah, regex previewer. This is the extension. And once you have that installed, oops, I've lost my place here. If let's take an HTML file and just like drag it and drop it here into the editor. And then I'm just gonna hit test regex and it will apply that regex to this file. So you can see here now, right? I know like, does this work? Yes, it does work, right? It's stripping out, it's matching the HTML tags in their content, but not the actual text. So very, very good at regex, easy to test. This is something you can use Copilot before. Regex is extremely powerful for doing you know, a pattern matching things that you might otherwise try to program. Uh, and so we've typically steered clear of regex. If you have Copilot, you don't have to do that anymore. You can actually use regex now, um, but you do need to test it because remember, will Copilot give you bad answers? Will it make mistakes? It will definitely make mistakes. All right. So the other thing that it's really good at is cron jobs. Um, if you've worked with cron jobs before, they have this sort of, um, and where did our, let's go back to our sidebar chat here. Let's start a new chat. Cron jobs have this like, it's like star, 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 star. If you've seen them like, uh, let's, let's just look at one. That's for example, cron job. Um, and it looks like the pilot. Oh, did it go? There we go. 
All right, so that's a cron job. It's giving, it's trying to do it with Node because it sees my editor here, but right here. So this, it just defines like when something should run. It's a scheduling tool. And so if we wanted something to run on, you know, every other week at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, we'd have to write that cron job, but Copilot's really good at this. We can say cron job to run um, every other week on Tuesday at 9 a.m. And it should have no problem with this. And see if you can explain it to us. So there we go. That's what it would be if we were actually going to try to make that cron job. So anytime you run across something that's very pattern based, like regex or cron jobs, uh, Copilot is phenomenal at those things. All right, let's take a look at other places where it shines. Uh, in fact, let's close all these windows. We got too many, too many open. And uh, eh, collapse this. All right. So let's say in this project here, I've got a bunch of videos. And what I want to do is create thumbnails for each of these videos. And I know that I can do this with FFmpeg, which is a library for parsing video, converting video. Uh, but I don't know how to use FFmpeg because I just don't use it that often, right? So this is the kind of thing that I would normally Google. But again, Copilot's really good at this. So let's just ask Copilot here. Let's just say, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up something called the Quick Chat, which is Command Shift I, and it comes up like this, kind of like uh, um, the what is this called on a Mac? This right here, Spotlight, right? I think Windows has something similar, kind of like that. I like this because like you can mess around in your code here, and it just kind of hangs out on top until you hit Escape and send it away. It's the same chat experience as the sidebar. But let's just ask it and say. Um, Create thumbnail uh, from video with FFmpeg. So I've made a lot of mistakes. Like, look at the misspellings. These, these two words are combined. Let's just see if this works. I'm going to say it does. Yeah, see? See how good it is at this? All right, great. So let's take this. this F, let's, let's copy this command here. Let's go into the terminal and move into our FFmpeg folder. I'm going to get rid of the chat here. And um, come on, terminal. I'm screen sharing, so everything has ground to a halt. OK, so let's go into our FFmpeg folder, and then uh, FFmpeg. <laughs> I called the folder the same thing as the command. It's a terrible idea. Uh, Let's see here. All right, there we go. So can we can we list this? It looks like my terminal is my terminal is uh, struggling. My whole computer is struggling. Chat to share my screen. It's too much. I'm going to end this PowerPoint. Maybe that'll help. Oop. Come on, terminal. <laughs> I think. I think that the demo gods have declared this session over. However, what I wanted to point out was that Copilot is very, very good at doing things like FFmpeg here. And I really wanted to show this to you. So hopefully we can get this to work. Let's move into that uh, directory. All right. So let, then let's, let's paste this. Let's go into our videos folder. Let's paste this in. And then let's see, what do we have? Uh, let's pick the first one, CCDDT, that stands for Copilot can do that. Copilot can do that, brand colors. All right, and then let's go ahead and convert this to, uh, let's get, let's get a, a thumbnail from this. So we did this, and do we get a thumbnail? Let me see here. Yes, we do, right? So we got a thumbnail from the video here, right? And so now we could expand on this and say, uh, write a shell script that loops through all videos in the covers folder and extracts a thumb, OK? And it should be able to, without me saying FFmpeg, it should be able to generate this for us, right? So again, this is one of these things where you're just trying to automate something. You just want to create these thumbs, right? You don't have time to learn everything there is to learn about FFmpeg um, or shell scripts. Copilot can do that. All right, that's all the time we have. Unfortunately, Copilot can do a whole lot more. We got about halfway through all of the material, but uh, I'm gonna send it back to the studio just to try to stay on time here. 
And uh, yeah, thank you so much, chat, for joining. And I hope that uh, you've learned a lot about Copilot and what it can do. Thank you. Thank you.